I have fallen in love, and I couldn't have done it without Albany and the one thing you're experiencing right now, my voice. I had no idea it would change my life, find me a home, and someone to love. Eleven years ago, I created a radio show, and sometimes people write to me. A couple years ago, I got an email from a listener named John. It was unlike any I had ever received before. It said, I just moved here from DC. I'm having trouble meeting people. A colleague told me about your radio show. I listened. You play great music. Just wanted to let you know, things are looking up. And if we're ever in the same place at the same time, I'd love to buy you a drink of your choice. So I showed this email to some friends, and they were like, you have got to meet this guy. <laughs> and I was like, I have got to keep doing the radio show. Until then, I hadn't really understood the impact it could have. At first, I was stumped for what to call it. And I was on a walk one day, and it came to me. Radio photo booth. Because who doesn't love a photo booth? And if I combined that with freeform radio, I'd have nothing but a winner, right? Well, by the end of the walk, I had decided that it really didn't have that ring to it. So I deleted it. The photo booth part came from when I was a photography student in college, and that was back when I thought my true gift was photography. After I graduated, I did what any aspiring photographer would do. I committed to 10 months of national service in AmeriCorps. I had always liked doing good things for people, and I wanted to practice including it in my photography. Most of my time was spent with my 12-person team. We made trails in city parks in St. Louis. We painted homeless shelters in Kansas City. And there was that one time we went all the way down to Texas to build bunk beds for a summer camp. And that is where I got my first clue about my true gift, my voice. Picture this. A group of 20-somethings roll into Star, Texas, population 80, 8 zero. We're in a white van with US government plates, tinted windows. We all wear military-like uniforms. A third of us have dreadlocks, and one of us has a mohawk. Me. <laughs> I know, hard to believe. It was not very good looking. Um, one night, we decided to do karaoke at the local diner. I had just finished a passionate rendition of She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy. And I walked off stage, and someone tapped me on the shoulder. My daughter over there, she wanted me to come ask you, where did you park your spaceship? Because <laughs> she looked out the window, and she didn't see it in the parking lot. She figured that the only way you could be here is if you were from another planet. I was very confused. <laughs> but I played along, and I laughed and introduced myself to her little daughter, who said nothing. <laughs> so I walked back to my team and told them the whole story. And they laughed, but I was still really confused. And I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> and they looked at me just as dumbfounded and said, 
Wait, you have no idea that you sound funny when you talk? No, I had no idea. Well, I grew closer to my team, and we all grew closer to the radio. We lived for REO Speedwagon, Journey, Led Zeppelin, anything that we could sing along to to get through the hard and honestly tedious work that we were doing. There was that one time that Pink Floyd's Shine On You Crazy Diamond came on, and it totally got me through this embarrassing crying episode while I was cleaning up some mouse poop. <laughs> AmeriCorps ended, and I was seeking a cool city, and also a city to be close to my boyfriend at the time. So like anybody who wants to be close but not too close, I chose one six hours away. <laughs> Minneapolis. And that city thrilled me at first. I lived downtown. There was a dive bar across from my apartment, a coffee shop on the corner, and a record store was opening up next door. And the radio. Oh my god, the radio. I lived on radio time. Wake up to KFAI, fall asleep to the classic R&B station. That's where I heard the DJ say one night, you've, you're listening to 89.9, and it's all you've got on. And that is <laughs> the most seductive thing you can say on air, and I wish I had come up with it. <laughs> but my relationships with the city and my boyfriend were not working out. The city was perfect on paper. Beautiful things to see and do but not enough to draw me out of my little apartment and away from what felt like my only true friend, the radio. One night, heartbroken and sad and lonely, I called my college roommate, Andrea. She was living in Albany and with her husband and two kids. And she said, come live with us until you figure out where you belong. Leave Minneapolis now. And I did. The plan was to stay here just until I figured out what to do next. Maybe go to Brooklyn to continue pursuing photography. Maybe Pittsburgh to do another stint in AmeriCorps. When I had first gotten my college roommate assignment and saw that Andrea was from Averill Park, New York, <laughs> I called her right away. Oh my God, is Averill Park in New York City? Like, is it just right next to Manhattan? <laughs> and she <laughs> laughed and she told me, no, it was near Albany, which is hours from the city. <laughs> okay, I was crushed. And here I was in 2001, coming to live with her. Two hours, two and a half hours from the city in a place that was not cool. <laughs> that was Albany. <laughs> I was on 787 one day, and a couple of days after arriving, and I heard the labor show on WRPI. And I swear to you, my only thought as I'm like gunning it on the interstate is, this is the kind of radio I live for. Maybe I could live here. So I needed a job. Andrea knew I loved books and that I had always wanted to work in a bookstore. So she said, check out the book house. Great, where is it? Oh, it's in a strip mall outside of Albany. A strip mall? No. I want to work downtown so I can feel the city. Okay, she was a good friend, so she ignored me, and she took me there anyway. 
I applied and I charmed the owner with my quirky striped socks and my ability to memorize shelves of books and I got the job. And working in the bookstore was great. I made friends, I stayed out super late at the Palais, I drank milkshakes at Stewart's, and photographed here and there, and of course, listened to the radio. Well, one of my customers had his own radio show on WRPI, and he said, you could get one too. Me? In all my years of listening and loving the radio, I had never thought that I could have my own radio show. So I took his advice, and I applied and got cleared to be a DJ at WRPI. And I was psyched. I knew the first song I was going to play, Sweet Virginia by the Rolling Stones. I know it is not about my home state of Virginia, but I loved singing along to it when it would come on the jukebox at the Madison Grill. I did a couple test shows without a name. You know, I had gotten rid of Radio Photo Booth. When I noticed there was this pattern to how I was picking out songs. I was skimming liner notes and song titles for any reference to a city. Living in one, loving one, enduring one, leaving one, and of course, finding the right one. That's when it, it occurred to me. I was searching for songs to make a soundtrack for wherever someone was listening from. Big city, small city, town in the mountains, it didn't matter. I wanted to talk to people in case they were feeling like I felt, that they were in a place that wasn't cool, that was hard to love, or maybe not the right place at all. I wanted the name of the show to be something that when you woke up in the morning and looked out at your world, you could say to that world, hello, pretty city. I've been saying that to my world for 11 years now. And everywhere I go, it says it back to me. For example, there was that woman brushing her teeth in the bathroom at a restaurant in Colony Center. And I said to her, what a great idea. And she turned around and like toothpaste going everywhere. And she goes, oh, you're Hello Pretty City. I love your radio show and your music. <laughs> <laughs> and like toothpaste is just dripping on her clothes. <laughs> and then recently there was a woman at dinner who grew up listening to the show. And she had listened to it with her father as he drove her to school. And then there was that time after the late concert at Valentine's, and I was so hungry. So I went to Bombers, and there was one seat at the bar. And I started talking to the bartender, and again, there was this tap on my shoulder. And I turn around, and I say to the guy, hold on one sec. I turn back to the bartender, please give me some chili cheese fries. <laughs> and he says, we stopped serving food a minute ago. So I turn back to the guy and I say, hi, thanks for waiting. He says, are you Hello Pretty City, Laura? Yes. I'm John, the guy who's been writing to you about your radio show. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know it was me? <laughs> and he said, your voice. A couple of weeks later, we went to see Ira Glass, the host of This American Life. And afterwards, I wrote to Mr. Glass. While he didn't give me any insights about being with someone just because of my voice, he did say that we should go on a real date and that if I was anything like him, I'd make sure drinking was involved. <laughs> we did have that real date, and we've been together for two years ever since. For the longest time, I thought it was the music that people were listening to Hello Pretty City for. But 
I realized they're not just listening for the music. They're listening for my voice and what my voice is saying. My voice is the soundtrack to how it feels to live here. And yes, I could have done this in Minneapolis, but it wouldn't have been Hello Pretty City. As much as I needed Albany, Albany needs me. I talk to my city and it talks back to me all the time. We all know that sometimes upstate is not the coolest. <laughs> but we and our true gifts are going to change that. We will change that. We're going to paper this city with our voices, with what delights us. No more waiting. If you see something that this place needs and your true gift can provide it, do it. Give it. Thanks, Pretty City.